Yo, yo, let me tell you a story about a plant nursery that grew from the ground up and now people won't shut up about their collection and great reputation. So I had to visit and see for myself because I hear from plant shelf to plant nursery in under a year. Wow. Welcome to the unsolicited plant tour. We were in a 10 by 10 pop-up tent and she was out there every night kind of taking care of things. After a certain point, we're like, okay, we need to we need to get something that's bigger. Well, we didn't really have the, the capital to have somebody build it for us. So we took out a loan and built that, put that up ourselves. Fun. So it took months, right? I mean, oh, this six, is weeks. It took yeah, six weeks. We were all working. We all had like full-time jobs. So we were kind of like coming out on the weekends, especially it was all day. And then on the other ones, we'd like sneak in for like the few hours that we had, but we got it done. Let's go in and... Welcome to UPT. I can feel the humidity. Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> Try to keep it around anywhere between like 70 and 80. Oh my there. gosh. Year round it feels pretty much like this. This specific greenhouse is for plants that turn red. So this is our sun stressing greenhouse. So as you can see, like we only have... Oh, now the fans are moving. Automated, uh, I assume. Yes. yes. So yeah. we have a swamp cooler with exhaust fans for heat. And then uh, during the winter, because it also snows here, um, we have a propane heater. We always yeah. say like what we put our like blood and sweat into like building this, like literally. No, literally. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, we make a great team, so like we make things Sometimes. work. Sometimes. If we, she wants things and then we make it work together, so. What's the estimated like electrical water costs yeah. for, uh, like, for like something like this? Like this. <laughs> yeah. Monthly expenses? Yeah, talking? yeah. Um, utilities. Like, yeah, utilities wise, if I include both of them, uh, we probably spend, I mean... <laughs> the heating itself is... Yeah, I mean, the heating itself, but we, we spend probably uh, $600 on utilities a month that kind of got added to the bills, so that's been an expense well, that we've had to deal with. Not including the heating. That's it's not including propane. Propane, we spend about three to $3,500 a month. 3K, yeah. yeah. But that's that's during the heart of winter. That's when it's like snowing outside. We're having to keep things nice and warm. So three, 3K for for heating? Yeah. These are my babies. Oh my. <laughs> three thousand a month for heating. I mean, that, that wasn't our, the worst of it. That that's the worst. worst. Okay, yeah. I'd say right now we're probably spending around an additional six hundred for. for the okay, okay. What's the cold as it gets here? We're in like California. We're sort of like in the desert ish of California. Because we're in the higher ups, we get we go to twenty eight. I think the the coldest. I think yeah. I mean the coldest nights have been like twenty four, twenty five, but twenty eight like during the heart of winter that was kind of normal. Twenty eight to like thirty two, and so we have some freezing and things like that. Okay. Uh, but in here, the coldest it gets will be like sixty three. Um, yeah. So. All and right. That, and that's like in the in the worst of it. So. Okay. Yeah, sixty three is fine. <laughs> yeah. You I mean be, you're you paying you're paying three thousand for three thousand a month for sixty three, you know, that's yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Wow. Happen. Let's just like go through <laughs> and I will ask questions about Hoyas as I, I see them, I guess. So I have to say like as a person who doesn't know anything about Hoyas. About Hoyas. I really like like stuff like the this. Big leaves. Yes, these like big leaves that have veins or whatever you call mm -hmm. them, like some sort of structure. So, um, they, like something, like something like this is something that I'm like really, really with. like attracted to. But do you like red? Because these <laughs> plants turn red. <laughs> right. I mean, any, any of these, so, but as a Hoya enthusiast or like a Hoya head, like uh, what do you, like what is it that you like? I do love thick leaved Hoyas, um, not only because they're, they're pretty and like they're big, sh very showy, but also, um easier to take care of. When you have a thick leaf Hoya, they store more water um, so that they can go days without being watered. You know? Okay. They can, go, they can take a little bit of drought. You don't have to have all these humidity. Oh, this is a Hoya. Is yeah. this a Hoya? Yeah. To be able to grow a Hoya. They will grow. They will stay alive. But right. if you want to grow them fast, then that's when you kind of want to like, okay, humidity, okay, warm, and all that stuff. But obviously every species is I hear like the challenge is getting them to flower? Yes, and it all varies. So some Hoyas, they like bright, bright light. Um, and it's not just bright light, the amount of light that you're giving it. So I had some Hoyas where from cutting, um, I was able to flower, like, or produce a peduncle within 20 days just by giving it, you know, 
14 hours of light every day. It varies per species. There are some, like this one. This is actually my goal this year. So this is called Lauterbachii. And it is known to be the hardest poet to flower in cultivation. And they have peduncles, and per peduncle you get like nine, you know, umbels or nine flowers. Okay. Per flower can be up to the size of a, a teacup. Okay. It's that big. It's one of the biggest uh, Hoya flower, or yeah, like flowering Hoya in the world. And my goal this year is to see if I can flower it. <laughs> so, so what is the average, like, how often do they flower? Like once a year? Once? It, it depends. There are okay. some Hoyas, like these guys, they just keep flowering. Like, oh, I see. You know, okay. They, just, yeah. they flower. Even some of our newer plants down there are flowering. Yeah. So. They're tiny. Um, don't be deceived because at night, this will, like one or two flowers will fill up the whole greenhouse. Like, oh. The, scent. Yeah. the smells are honestly like, it's incredible at night. When you come in here, that's whenever they kind of release the scents. And it's just, it's so sweet and sometimes like citrusy. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's really yeah. awesome. Yeah, I can, uh, I can appreciate that as a guy who like not really into flowers, but like, yeah. <laughs> what, these, like, you can expect flowering maybe in optimal condition once every few months, once every mm -hmm. month? Probably weekly. Weeks? At least these ones, they just keep cycling. Um, there are some flowers right here that they last a little longer, probably once. Oh. It probably like flower for me once every three weeks. This is sweet. Okay, scent. this is... I, 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 can, I, I, can, okay. I can get with this. Wow. <laughs> we'll have to show them the wow. Yeah. yeah. I know. That, that is awesome. that is nice. I mean, screw like roses and stuff. Like you can just give, <laughs> for Valentine's Day, you can just give people like Hoya flowers. Yeah. Like, it's one thing to be able to grow Hoyas, right? Like you have these foliage and whatnot. You're a Hoya, you know, you're a Hoya lover. Right. When you flower a Hoya in a household, it's like, okay, you really are a Hoya. <laughs> I've always thought of it like that. A beginning person just trying out Hoyas, show me a couple that you would like recommend. Um, Maybe well, like on the cheaper, you know, like on yeah. the affordable, like I don't know, easy let me just care. try. Easy to take care of and very rewarding, I'd say surigawensis. Um, a lot of people love big leaves, a lot of people like veins, so it's kind of have like this like beautiful like light green vein. And it turns red, and they grow super fast. They're green, and then they turn red, right? The yeah. older leaves are red? Correct. All right. Um, a lot of the misconception is that when you put a plant underneath it, like a really bright light, it should turn red right away. But it all varies. And in my experience, newer leaves, they tend to be, yeah, they'll come out like a little bit of like a reddish color, but they'll harden to green first, and then over time, it'll turn to red. And then there's another uh, also misconception, let's say, you know, like I've been growing this, let's say in a shaded area and it's never turned red. I want it to turn, I want, like it's been growing for two years, let's say, right? And I want to turn it red. Even if I put it underneath a grow light for a long time, because the plant has hardened and is so used to being so green, it takes a lot longer for them to turn red. Oh, I see, I see. There's other ones too where they actually, they're easier to turn red, like if you get them while they're new leaves. So as they're first uh, coming out, okay. um, or the longer they've been out, it's actually easier to turn them red. So it really varies by plant. Um, and then kind of learning that is part of the part of the challenge. And a lot of what, I mean, she's, she's amazing with her knowledge. I don't know how she keeps up with it, honestly. Uh, I'm just, I'm just the muscle. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. So. One of the questions I have as a person who doesn't know Hoyas, what do you do with these things? Okay, so when you, when I propagate, sometimes, you know, you lose leaves, something happened, you know, or they're just cosmetically damaged, I just chop them off. Right. I don't chop the, the stems um, like this because what happens is there's a node and that's going to continue to grow from there. Let me give you an example, like this one. See how it started growing? I thought like these things just grow and then eventually you just have a plant with, with like this, stem. with this like weird stem coming out of it, and I'm always like, am I supposed to? Do is is there it? something that's gonna happen? You have to give them something to climb up to, so you can get like bigger leaves. If you don't give them a trellis, or if you don't let them climb or like grab onto something, they're kind of thinking that, hey, you know, I can't support my own leaves just yet, so I gotta keep shooting out this oh, vine I see. and find something. A lot of people actually they don't start trellising until like it's like right. really long or like right. oh my gosh you know it's falling over and I got trellis. I like to trellis them early on even if I don't have like a vine yet. 
The reason being is like let's say like you know this plant is hanging right here. The leaves grow towards the light. So if your plant is hanging, when you trellis it, the leaves are gonna be all upside down because they're they grow oh, that yeah, way. Yeah. So, it's the same thing with philodendrons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I like to trellis them early so that over oh. time they kind of like lay flat and it's just more pleasing in the eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that 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 is pretty pleasing to the eye. Yeah, personal preference, <laughs> and I know like there are so many other, um, you know, arts and crafts. You know, um, people make their own trellises and all that stuff. And I wish I could get into it. I just don't have enough right, time. Right, right. Um, but it really doesn't matter to me. I like bamboos because they're sustainable and also like they don't rot easily. Oh. And over time, the, the leaves are gonna cover it anyway. Let's talk about another like beginner Good hoya. Beginner hoyas. Um, sunrise is really good. So, I mean, that looks really, really cool for a beginner Hoya. <laughs> this is our actually I mean, very first Hoya. Literally like... The first Hoya we ever had. The Sunrise has a special place in our heart. Yeah. So, it's, it's uh, how we got into it. Yeah. 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 Ye
like our own mix. Around four or five months ago, we went through the arduous task of uh, repotting around like 6,000 plants. Um, Into Cocoa House. From our mist to Cocoa House, yeah, because the Hoyas just absolutely love them. I mean, even our, our philodendrons and deer, All they, of our philodendrons. Yeah, are, even yeah. they like it as well, so. Even though like, they look like exactly the same, certain plants only want like a certain amount of um, uh, water. Well, having a greenhouse, having thousands of plants, you kind of can't pick and choose. Like, okay, I water this only on Mondays. You right, know? right. Coco husk, it's very, very hard to overwater, in my opinion. You just, I just go here and I just hose everything, and they're right. okay, and they're so happy. I, I think that's a good strategy, even for people with smaller collections. We shoot for the most easy ways to take care of the plants. So, like, coco husk is one of those ways for sure. Coco husk, just easy to take care of them for the watering cycle. Right. We do slow release fertilizers, so we basically just fertilize one time every three, four months, somewhere in there. Yeah. And is that the, what these little balls are? Oh, those are eggs. No, no. I'm, 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 I'm those are those are fertilized like, eggs. Yeah. Fertilized eggs. <laughs> I think a lot of growers in Asian countries are predominantly cocoa husk. I think it's in sustainable. The, yeah, I think in the U.S. mostly it's been perlite because I think cocoa husk is probably a little bit. Either, is it more expensive or harder to get? It's yeah, it's not as common just yet. The only thing that I wanted to mention about that is because uh, is a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I wanted to switch to husk. Well, right. there's really not a lot of, of uh, readily available husk for house plants, and the reason why I'm uh, mentioning that is when they they produce these husks, or like when they chop them up, they wash them in in the ocean, which is very very salty. Okay. So if it's not graded for plants, then your husk had soaked up so much salt that when you plant your plant there, in the beginning it's going to thrive, but then all that salt's going to go up to your plant, it's going to clog the roots, and eventually it's going to die. Uh, so if you have to be careful, yeah, you have to be careful. Some people buy the reptile husk. Yeah. I always recommend clean it, wash it, triple, you know, right. five times, or some people even boil it, just so you know that you got all of those out and the plants are not going to die over time. Wow, well, yeah, I mean I didn't I did not know there were different types of uh, types of husks. <laughs> That's why we're looking forward to carrying it ourselves so right. that we can kind of get a I guess trusted source out there to uh, a lot more than public. Yes. Okay, so let's collectors. Let's talk about let's talk about these since I love I love these <laughs> so much. So what are what are these called? So this is species Sulawesi GPS 8867. Okay, I, I don't, I'm not even <laughs> so going to try. <laughs> um, it's uh, obtained from uh, Sulawesi, that's a species Sulawesi. It's part of the Latifolia family. Right now there's like a big controversy with the whole Latifolia, like kind of like, you know, umbrella. Yeah. Um, it's kind of just one of those. Ah. Is it hard? Is this something that easy. like... Easy, okay. Easy. The general rule is the thicker the leaves, I think the easier to to take care of. I always had the impression that these like bigger, veinier ones would be like really hard. And I thought those were the collector ones, but Easy. but yeah. I'm not gonna... <laughs> yeah. Okay. They do well. The thinner leafed ones, um, they, those ones sometimes are really tough, especially when we're doing our propagations and stuff. Yeah. We tend to lose a little bit more of those than. Um, you have to water them a lot more, but yeah. at the same time. My yeah, so you have to water them a little bit more, but at the same time, they can rot easier and faster than the bigger ones. Uh, so. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. See you on the next episode. Till next time, happy planting.